bury your friends in your backyard. Bury your neighbor. Bury your best friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who the fuck's a lady? Huh? <laughs> it's officially the first mukbang. I really shouldn't be that it's excited. Not the first okay, but it's like technically the first one where I'm sitting down. The food is beautifully displayed, if I can say so myself. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another dun dun mukbang. Woo! I know what you're thinking. I know it. Did you even move? Because we got the stove in the same spot. We've got the refrigerator out of camera, literally right here on the same side. We've got pretty much the same cabinets. I honestly don't know. I was experiencing a lot of deja vu when I was setting up this mukbang because I was like, wait a minute, this feels like I didn't even move. Welcome, this is not pre-filmed, it's me in real time. It is pre-filmed. Yeah. We're eating Scofield Hut fried chicken. Apparently that this restaurant is super famous in Atlanta because they do Carolina Reaper fried chicken sandwiches. What? So we've got variations. We've got the chill, the medium, the hot, the spicy, something. Okay, it's labeled, so but just every, know. So yeah. every single one is a different level yeah, of spice. Exactly. So we've got Reaper. We've got extra spicy, extra hot. I'm going to show you guys. We've got their seasoned fries, their potato salad. They have something called the comeback sauce, which I think is kind of like a, maybe like a Raisin Cane sauce. I'm excited about it. They also do maple syrup. They also have so Carolina excited. Carolina Reaper Pepper Powder. This one was recommended by Dan Dan. So and my sister's fiance. Okay, yeah. So, so we've got two good, people. You know. Kill him. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get started and talking about Lake Lanier and the spooks and the mysteries and all of that, I just want to say one thing, okay? If you guys have been keeping up with our Instagram stories, I've been posting a lot about this move. I've been I've been trying to get some good shots. I'm I'm crouching down, doing the squat poses. I'm out on the porch trying to give you some rain shots because it rains here, right? And there have been so many instances during this entire move where I have dropped my phone at the airport, literally down the steps because I have steps now. If you were me like a year ago, before I started using case to five phone cases, my heart would have jumped out of my bib. It would have jumped out of my chest. I would have been terrified. Did my phone break? But no, not with my case to five case. Honestly, I don't feel that anymore because these are made out of a two layer construction of Chi Tech. I love their impact cases and their ultra impact cases. This is one of my favorites. Look at how cute this pink cow print is. If you guys have an impact case, you can actually drop test it. It's approved for 6.6 .6 feet, which is so much taller than me. I would actually have to make an effort to drop my phone at that height. And if you guys have the ultra impact case, you can actually drop it 9.8 feet in the air. I have dropped it down these stairs so many times. This is me every single morning. Afterwards, not a single scratch on the case or my phone. My phone, mint condition. My phone case, mint condition. My walls, destroyed. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I feel like I was always on the boat of like, a protective phone case is gonna look like a brick. But with Caseify, they have so many cute designs. They literally do collaborations with different artists. They actually have like soul-based graphic designers that they collab with, which is super cool. They do collabs with like big K-pop groups. They have a KFC collab in the works. And the case is antimicrobial, which eliminates 99% of germs that land on your phone. I feel like that's really important for today's day and age. And on top of that, this case is made with 50% recycled material, so you can feel good about your phone case. And if you want to make your case really special, you can actually custom a collage of maybe your friends, maybe your family, maybe your dogs, or maybe some art. So make sure to go to casetify.com slash bis, that's casetify.com slash b-i-s-s to get 15% off of your new favorite phone case. And thank you, Casetify, for sponsoring today's video, and let's get into the food. Okay, I'm a little nervous. Can we start? Yes, let's okay. start. I need my glove for this one for sure because I don't know. Ooh, that's kind of cute. This so, one's the reaper. So this one's the medium? I feel like I should have the medium. Wait, can we just... Start from the lowest. Yeah, okay. So medium is gonna oh, no chill. chill. Okay, Extra should I start hot. with the chill? I'll yeah. take a bite and then you take a bite. Oh. We're gonna just I'm gonna try this red sauce that they have. Okay, ready for the chill. Why does the chill look so red? What if they accidentally put the wrong one in here? Do you see the juice in that chicken? Is it good? It's so good. Oh my try. god. Is it spicy though? You know what? I'm so sorry, Atlanta, that I ever doubted your food. 
I was lucky a little bit nervous moving because I was like, what if there's not as good food? Mm. Every restaurant I've had so far, and I've had a ton, so good. Holy cow, this is the biggest, fattest, juiciest mm -hmm. patty. But it's juicy. I thought, okay, I'm looking at the chicken. I'm mm -hmm. thinking this is going to be another one of those. I forgot what brand it was, but they just had the thickest crust and no chicken. Mm-hmm. No. It's straight chicken. Okay, so this is the medium. I think some maple syrup might be good with this. Oh, my God. Do you want... Can I have some maple syrup? Mm-hmm. That's what's it for, right? For mm -hmm. the chicken. Oh! I can feel some heat in that medium. For sure. That's not a good sign, because then the Reaper is actually going to be really spicy. Mm. Oh my god. The fries are so good. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I need to try the potato salad. I love potato salad. It's just something I've always loved, and not a lot okay. of people do it well. Not to a lot honest, of places sell it, yeah. I don't taste any spice, so I'm gonna go for the Reaper. This is too, what? um, it's too slow. Okay, I'm gonna skip the hot, go to extra hot, and then I'll do the Reaper. Oh no, be careful! Be careful! Wow, the extra hot is so hot. Oh, this is good. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Am I going to die? Should I dip it in some maple You're syrup? You're not going to die. I'm dying at the extra hot. Okay, you might die a little. Okay, let me get okay, a little a piece. Oh my god, I love it. Oh, I love it. That's perfect. Mmm. Okay. Here's what's different. They're not spicy just to be spicy. They taste good. Because mm -hmm. you know how sometimes you'll have pepper-based products like the ghost pepper noodles? Yeah. Those are good too. I think that they're just spicy to be spicy. I don't necessarily think they're tasty. Okay, it's so spicy. Let's talk about Lake Lanier. Lake Lanier is a very fascinating place, okay? It recently went viral on TikTok and on Twitter, and I was thinking, that doesn't make sense. I have been to Lake Lanier so many mm. times in my life, right? And nothing of what they are saying is making sense to me. And I feel like it has to do with the fact that I never went to Lake Lanier really to party. Like, it's always like like gatherings with families, right? So you're not, you're not drinking alcohol, but that's mainly why people go to Lake Lanier. So I'm also thinking- to people where is that? Lake Lanier is about 60 miles away from Atlanta, Georgia, and it's this massive man-made lake. Here's the thing about man-made lakes, okay? They creep me out. I don't like it. I don't like the vibes of it. I don't like the idea that there were just men down here digging or doing whatever, filling it with water. It just feels unnatural. It feels just a little bit I'm uncomfortable. Pretty sure it wasn't mandate. I mean, but they did do a lot of stuff because it was like in the 50s. Mm. So, I mean, it's just really intense. They just filled it with water. There was two dams. There was a purpose to all of this, but I feel like there's a lot of sinister things going on. And now in hindsight, after I've already been there, experienced it for myself, I can truly see why people think that it's haunted and I'm on board. I'm never going back. I'm never going to Lake Lanier. It's creepy. If you go to their website, Lake Lanier calls it one of America's best lakes. Self-proclaimed, might I add, okay? because it's on their website. They also write on their website, front page. You will enjoy the time that you spend here. We guarantee it. How? How the fork are you gonna guarantee it, huh? Is this some money back guarantee? Because I don't understand. How will you guarantee it? So a lot of the times, people will get these boats. They go out on Lake Lanier. They have uh, little picnics. There's about 600 months. We're back. Uh, this is a very sour spot of our relationship right now because I wanted to order a bunch of Ikea shelves and he said, listen lady, you don't know how to build Ikea shelves, so then I'm gonna end up building all these stupid Ikea shelves. And I was like, you know what? I will build it. So now, now that I'm seeing the boxes of shelves, my confidence is kind of shot. <laughs> I feel a little bit nervous. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable. But we're back, okay? Uh, it's really good. It's really spicy. I don't know if you can see, but my sinuses are right 
light in action, I'm actually going to try dipping it in maple syrup. So back to Lake Lanier. I mean, people really use it for recreational purposes. I think there's about 8 million people that go on a yearly basis to ride jet skis, to go fishing, to go swimming in the man-made lake. I mean, it's just absolutely confusing. Did you know the size of Lake Lanier? This man-made lake. You're thinking it's going to be, well, it's it's in the name, Lake Lanier, right? It's, it maybe it's a Lanier little lake. A little huge. line. No, it's about 600 to 700 miles of shoreline. Down. It's huge. It, 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 600 miles? Of shoreline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's insane. It's about the size of 1 million Olympic sized pools. 1 million. Hmm. There's like 600 billion gallons of water in that thing. It's absolutely gnarly. So like I said, you're thinking Lake Lanier, right? Where does the name come from? It's not actually Lanier. It's spelled L-A-N-I-E-R. And it's named after a man by the name of Sid Lanier, Sidney Lanier, an American musician, a poet, an author, but also he served in the Confederates Army of the United States. And on top of that, he would write these poems where um, he used a lot of colorful language to describe the differences between white farmers and black farmers. Okay. Okay? <laughs> so that's who they decided to name the whole freaking lake, the biggest lake in Georgia. They named it after him. <laughs> you know what? This is like Lake Lanier is telling me, you better shut up. <laughs> you better stop. Okay, let me turn that off. So because of that reason, a lot of people don't really refer to it as Lake Lanier. They refer to, to it the Cursed Lake of Georgia. Just the Cursed Lake, right? Some people just call it, why would you even go there? That doesn't make any sense. Because in recent years, there's been so many boating accidents. There's been actually a lot of people who have drowned to death. In total, Lake Lanier has claimed over the lives of 657 people have died at Lake Lanier. Do to boating accidents, boating fatalities, drowning, all of these things. Sometimes murder, sometimes suicide. And it's said that there's about 24 bodies that are still in the water, that are dead, that they just haven't gotten back yet, that haven't floated to the surface, that haven't been found. Do you really want to be swimming in a lake where there's dead bodies? Why isn't that every lake though? This is true, but... But this one's weird. Yes. So why is it going viral on TikTok, you're saying? Like, what, for what reason? There was a video of the dock collapsing. A dock collapsing and then people fell into the water? Mm-hmm. And, and everyone's like, haha, look at the party goers at Lake Lanier, right? But then the comments started talking. They're like, no, that's not really just party goers. There's some weird shit going on in there. Then mm -hmm. people started digging and the history of Lake Lanier is really nasty. It's disgusting. It's despicable. Hmm. So you say, mm -hmm. I should take this off our to-do list Yeah. with my family? Was it on our to-do list? <laughs> <laughs> yes, take it off. Hmm. I'm going to try the maple syrup. Is it good? My dad go fishing there. What? Well, now I'm not eating any seafood he brings <laughs> over, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I'm gonna try it raising cane style, just dipped in the <clears throat> sauce. How is it? So good. Mm. Oh my god. Honestly, this is almost as good as cane. Mm-hmm. There have been instances where boats will crash into things and then once the crash is over, they call in like the, the boat guard or whatever, the coast guard. It's not the coast guard. It's like, you know, people who go and rescue, right? They'll mm -hmm. call them in. There's nothing. Did you mean that you bumped into something here? Yes, we bumped into something here. That's why our boat is broken. But when they look, there's absolutely nothing that they could have possibly bumped into. So that's kind of creepy, right? Then there's instances where people feel like they've almost drowned. Did you know most of the drownings at Lake Lanier, they happened very close to the shore. It's not people going out in their boats, jumping into the water, and then just drowning to death. It's very, very close to the shore. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, a lot of these people are experienced swimmers. They're not just you or me that's like, oh, I can swim. I mean, these are people who go swimming very frequently. They go often, but they'll pass. 
So you're thinking what I'm thinking, okay? I mean, this is how I feel about national parks in most situations. I know there's conspiracies, but it's just to me, it's like, well, nature is very scary. It's powerful. You just don't know how frail the human body is. Sun exhaustion. Do you know how crazy sun exhaustion is? You're just out in the sun all day, then suddenly you just like pass out at 5 p.m. and then you end up drowning. Or maybe you drink an alcohol. Maybe you're drunk, you're a little bit disoriented. And on top of that, alcohol makes you dehydrated, which makes you a bigger victim of sun exhaustion. I'm thinking all of these things but a lot of the people that have survived potential drownings at lake lanier they said it's it's an odd way to drown mm -hmm. so they survived and they said it's not that you feel like there's pressure pulling you down like you might in an ocean where a big tide comes in you just feel like you're being thrashed down you're being hit by a truck and you just can't get back up it's almost as if something is pulling you by one point of your body it's not your whole body is being thrashed. It's almost like if your leg were to get caught on something, or if I were hiding in the murky waters and I grabbed your leg and pulled it. And they said it's bizarre. Then some people stated that they'd be swimming very close to the shore, and it's almost like their lungs just got punched. And they're exhausted. It's like this instant exhaustion that they can't explain. I mean, these are experienced swimmers, a lot of them, and they just don't really know what it is, but they know that it's not necessarily something that they felt in different lakes or different bodies of water. Hmm. Is that not creepy? There are so many instances where boats will just capsize, just flip over, just hit something that's not really there, or they'll say that it was this massive wave that came out of nowhere, capsized our boat, and then there were no more waves afterwards. Now, when I was reading this, I was a little bit confused because all of the times that I've been to Lake Lanier, I don't know if I was too young to even remember correctly, right? Mm -hmm. But I never really imagined it to be a place where there were rough waters. I thought it was very still yeah. because I'm usually <clears throat> terrified of rough water. I know this for a fact. You cannot, for the life of me, drag me out into the ocean without me feeling some type of way, without me kind of putting up a fight, kind of screaming. I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but I would feel something about it. But Lake Lanier, I imagine Imagine it was a very pleasant experience like the waters are calm you almost feel like just a little paper boat in the bath there's nothing crazy going on there's not these massive currents that are con constantly changing there's no crazy tides typically but they said that randomly a giant wave will come out of nowhere flip their boat and then disappear <laughs> and then there's a woman called the lady of Lake Lanier oh yeah and she's kind of an urban legend in the state of Georgia. You go on the highway, you might see her. You go onto Lanier Bridge, you might see the Lady of Lake Lanier. So what, what happened, right? It's suspected that her real name is Delia Young. And she was in the car with her best friend, Susie Roberts, who was driving her Ford car. And I believe they were going through like a gas station. I think they were like stealing stuff, to be honest, okay? So they're going back and forth and they're on the Lake Lanier Bridge when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I mean, it wasn't raining, it wasn't thundering, there was no weird weather conditions, there was no slippage on the ground, it wasn't iced over. But Susie Roberts just, yeets off the bridge. There's skid marks left behind and the car hits the river. That's or hits the lake. That's a true story. That's what everyone thought. That's mm -hmm. a true story. The authorities that come out to investigate, yes, the skid marks literally lead directly into the lake, but they search the lake, they can't find the car. The car is gone. The women are gone, the car is gone. There is no possible explanation for where else the car could have gone. This doesn't make any sense. So around that time, people start reporting that, hey, I was driving on the highway and I saw this woman just wearing this blue dress she it looked like a ghost, I'm gonna be honest. It didn't look like a regular person. Some people reported that she looked like she was drenched in water. Some people said that she was dry, but they all said that she was missing her hands. And it was just weird. She looked lost. She looked like she was looking for something. Almost imagine you at a, at a mall parking garage looking for your car. You're like, maybe not as creepy. You're probably like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> but like, you know, just kind of looking around. You're not necessarily out to haunt people, you're just, Looking around, they thought that was spooky. Then guess what? 18 months later, a body floats to the top. Severely decomposed, there's fragments of a blue dress. Delia was actually wearing a blue dress the day that she vanished, mm -hmm. and her hands were gone. So, I mean, that's what? explained by the fact that there's a lot of catfish, I believe, at Lake Lanier. I don't know if there still are, but there was at the time. So they believed that she had been kind of fallen victim to catfish. Mm -hmm. And they had preyed upon her, but her hands were missing. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And to this day, a lot of high school kids will speed up and down Lake Lanier Bridge trying to catch a glimpse of the Lady of the Lake. I was there. At the bridge? A few years ago, when okay. I visited my family, we went to Lake Lanier. We rented a boat, remember? Oh, yeah. And did oh. you find the Lady of the Bridge? No, but we did pass by it. Okay, because I was about to say, who the fuck's the lady? Huh? <laughs> what girl did you see at Lake Lanier? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is that not creepy? Do you believe in stuff like this? Urban legends? Mm-hmm. No. Or do you think it's things that come after the fact? Yeah, I don't believe it. I think when you hear the history, you might change your mind. Mm. Are you going to tell me the history? Mm-hmm. Oh. No, I'm going to leave it like this. <laughs> I'm actually going to go now. <laughs> I have plans. I'm going to Lake Lanier. <laughs> <laughs> then here's what gets crazy. 31 years later, after the Lady of the Lake has been found, 18 months after. Okay, so 31 years after these two women disappear, they had to drain the lake a little bit in that area because they needed to build new pillars for another bridge, right? They need to go in and dig that foundation into the lake. Mm-hmm. And that is when they see the shell of a rusty Forward. They go up to it. They investigate. There are human remains in the driver's seat, the purse, the ID, all of these things. They pointed to the body being Susan Roberts, still inside her car. That's crazy. But they couldn't find it. Find what? Remember, after they vanished, they searched the lake looking for that car. Yeah. They couldn't find it until 31 years later. Yeah, they're just really bad at searching. Okay, no, 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 no. You're ruining my spooks. <laughs> no, no, no. It's that spooky. That just pr- proves that the car was there all along. They just never found it. It was stuck in the lake, right? Yeah. So they were expecting the, something to float, but it was stuck there. No, I think they went in and dove for it. Well, somebody didn't do their job well, so. You said fire that person. Fire the team. <laughs> Now, what's creepy is that at the bottom of this lake, it's not just cars and dead bodies that you can find. There's actually full-blown concrete buildings, full-blown churches. There is a whole town under Lake Lanier. That's not a myth. That's not an urban legend. That's the freaking truth. That's history. What? Yes. There are full-blown trees under the lake. Did you know when they were originally filling the lake with water, a lot of the local residents decided, well, let me just take a swim. There's already water inside, which is just crazy. Maybe they were bored back in the day in like the 50s. I don't know, okay? They're bored out of their minds. They start swimming. A lot of them would hit the roofs of these concrete buildings. Some of them would get stuck on trees that they were just filling with water. Uh Uh-huh. It's crazy. Why was there just a giant man-made lake in the middle of Georgia? What the fork is going on, right? So they decided that they needed to supply a lot of water, but also hydroelectric power to a lot of the major towns in the state of Georgia. I'm talking Atlanta. There was Fulton County. I don't know. All of these other counties that they had to freaking put water into. So they decided, why not build this massive man-made lake? But did they have a huge place that just had, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of empty land that would just be perfect to fill it with water? No, they didn't. They only had towns. They had farms. They had civilization where people were living, were residing, were building their businesses, were building their homes. And the government decided, well, let's just fill their shit up with water. How do you do that? Just kind of dig a little pathway? So there was a ton of uh, ton of towns where Lake Lanier is now. There used to be a ton of towns, the main one being Oscarville. The Oscarville was home to a lot of farmers. So what the government did is they were like, well, let's just seize the land. Let's just take the land that you make money off of and that you live on, that you for generations have lived on for the greater good of the flourishing neighbors nearby. You know what I mean? Like we need to we need to help the city of Atlanta. Like that's what they were thinking. So they go in up to these homeowners and they approach them. We will give you this amount of money for your land. Now, mind you, this was not a lot of money. I mean, there are reports that people sold hundreds of acres of land for as little as $40,000 in today's money. Hmm. Hundreds of acres of land. So the government was incredibly undercutting them. They were just, you know, pulling one over on their heads. So a lot of the residents decided, I don't care if you give me Jeff Bezos money. This land has been in my family for generations. This is where I have all my, this is like a sentimental place for me. I'm never leaving. Mm -hmm. So what does the government do? They don't give you the money. They actually forcibly remove you from your house. 
So they empty practically the majority of Oscarville, all of its historic buildings, all of its libraries, and its cemeteries. So they had a lot of cemeteries in Oscarville. Now it's said that the government tried to relocate most of these people's graves, which is to me, that already itself is crazy because imagine the type of energy. Listen, I'm not even an energy person. I'm not like one of those, I'm not spiritual. I don't know what it is. I was just never born spiritual, right? I think that there's... There's moods, but I'm not like a, I don't think I feel people's energies well. Yeah. You know, you know how some people are like, oh. you don't like to mess with energy either. Oh yeah, no, I don't like to. Yeah, so you kind of, you kind of believe in energy. I am very respectful, but I don't think I'm good at it. Yeah. I think if I were good at it, I would totally be a believer of like, oh, well this energy and that energy, right? But because I can't feel anything like energy wise, I feel emotions, but no energy. (laughs) It's mainly just me crying in a corner. Like what's with the vibes? (laughs) So they're moving. They're digging these people up and moving their plots of graves to different areas. Now, back then, there are a lot of unmarked graves because you're talking about farmland. Sometimes you just bury your friends in your backyard. Bury your neighbor. Bury your best friend. You know, you just kind of bury your family members in your backyard. This was back in the day, right, where there weren't massive, massive cemeteries. There were just family-owned plots of land that you would bury your relatives, right? So a lot of these people, because it's unmarked, they were never moved. Mm. They cut down all of the wood buildings, but all the concrete brick structures, they just left. I'm talking full on family homes, churches, businesses, they left it. And they started filling the whole town with water, just flooding the town. All the memories, all the sentimental moments, all of the history, all of the heritage, just flooding it with water. Is there pictures of that? There's pictures of when people go diving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. But it's really murky and you can't see much. So there are like freaking houses and stuff. No. And there was All once under. a drought recently, uh, the early 2000s, where they started seeing parts of like a, a huge concert place. So it's like this racetrack where you would have these bleachers of people that would go and watch the cars race. That's well, the top crazy. of the bleachers started showing because of the drought. Oh my god. They just sunk these like boats that Oscarville would use. They uh-huh. just sunk them all. A lot of divers go in with some like uh, GoPros and they try to get some. It obviously looks different now. Like you're not going to go down there and find Atlantis, right? Mm-hmm. Which is what a lot of people try to Photoshop for these Lake Lanier videos and like these Lake Lanier articles that I've read. But I mean, it's yeah. there. It's obvious that there's concrete buildings. It's obvious that something's there and it's not just like you're expecting marshland coming out. Now, what makes this very spooky is Oscarville in general. The Lake Lanier is in Forsyth County. Um, Oscarville was in Forsyth County. And Forsyth County has just a lot of interesting history, especially with black people. Just gnarly history. I mean, did you know Tamla Horsford? She was allegedly murdered in Forsyth County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about that it's absolutely insane so there are moments where in Forsyth's history they actually got these black men these young teenagers these young boys and like early 20 year olds and blamed them for the vicious r word and murder of a young white woman so what do they do they arrest them and now these young men they're like i didn't do it i really didn't do it i don't know what you're talking about and the only reason that they were even arrested to this crime is because literally the sheriffs were looking around saying are there any black people around here That's how they solved crimes back in the day. They didn't even go, well, let's look at the evidence. They said, well, you're white. It's gotta be you, because you're not white. So then they just brought them into prison, and these young men are like, I did not do that. Like, what are you talking about? I don't even know this person. I was at home with my mom. Like, I don't understand why you're doing this to me. And they did a mock lynching. And they said, if you don't confess to this crime, we're gonna do this to you, but for real, for reals. So what do they do? They confess to the crime like any normal person would have, right? So once they confess, now they're sitting in prison. The sheriff's department is like, well, we probably don't need to guard them, even though the entire county is trying to kill them. So what do these people do? They come in and they try to kill them. Two of these teenage boys were actually hung in a, in a crowd of 5,000 people. 5,000 oh people God. came to watch these people get hung. These young boys get hung. They're like 16. I believe, and most people believe, even like historians believe, that they definitely didn't commit the crimes. And then there was something called the Night Riders where they would just come in on a 
and just shoot up black people's houses. Just kill their farm animals, kill their children, kill them, just would literally for the sole purpose because they're black, not because they did anything wrong, which honestly that wouldn't even warrant that, but just truly because they're like, oh my God, I saw a black person was living there. Let's call the Night Riders. They would come up and try to kill the whole, like just desecrate the whole family which is insane, right? Mm -hmm. So then at that point, all these black people, they fled for Scythe County, like just truly fled. They're, I believe still now it's a really, really low population of black people in Forsyth County because there's just a lot of history there. And on top of that, Lake Lanier, Oscarville, there's a lot of history there. So a lot of people suspect that the government just kind of was like, wait, two birds, one stone. Let's also just bury all of this really disgusting, nasty history mm -hmm. with some water. And ironically, or intentionally, let's name it after a Confederate soldier. <sighs> oh my gosh, who, who comes up with stuff like this? Who is the government? Who comes up with stuff like this? I'm laughing because I'm shocked. I'm like laughing because I'm like, that doesn't even, how does that even make sense? And that's kind of the history of Lake Lanier. And to this day, I mean, I feel like people are kind of terrified. It's now reintroduced the terrifyingness. I feel like when I was growing up, there wasn't any, maybe I was too young, but I never heard anything like that. I had no idea what Lake Lanier was even named after. I just assumed it's like the way people name streets, just random. <laughs> like it, it must be nothing, right? I thought it was like a boating place. I didn't even know it was for water supply. That's how dumb I was. I was like, oh, it's like a fun, natural lake that you boat on and fish on, you know, and you go swimming in. I don't wow. like it. And the bottom of the lake has like a visibility near zero. So even if what? you were to go down there and search, it's really murky. Huh. How do you feel now? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm stay away here. But now that I know the history, I'm like, I don't think I want that energy. I'm not even like an energy driven person, but like that's some weird energy over there. Now all the tweets I've been seeing, cause when I was doing research, you can like type in Lake Lanier Twitter, right? Cause I'm trying to see, are people still going? Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of people still going, drinking, okay? They don't even care. They're just living their life. But I see a ton of tweets that are like, guys, wish me luck. I'm going to a birthday party at Lake Lanier. <laughs> Some people are like, if you don't like your mans, take him to Lake Lanier. <laughs> Is this really like going viral right now? It went viral like a couple months ago. And I was, I was, I, I don't know what I was waiting for, but then it just worked out that we moved to Atlanta. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to save it. So when I get there, this is going to be one of the first things I talk about. Huh. Fascinating. Don't go to Lake Lanier, go to Scoville Hot Chicken. It's really good. Would you recommend the Reaper or no? Oh yeah, it's not that bad. It's not like one of those torturous. It wasn't, it was like, it tastes spice. good. Like if you can do nuclear noodle, mm -hmm. you can handle this. Except literally two seconds ago when he was outside and we were putting in the Ikea shelves into the garage, he's like, if it's not spicy, I don't want it. And he's got snot coming out his nose. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys grew up around Lake Lanier, or maybe you were an avid Lake Lanier goer, or you just love the history of Lake Lanier, and you know something that I didn't know, please leave it in the comments because this absolutely fascinates me. Just the history, everything about it is just so bizarre to me. It just feels, I'm not a conspiracy type person, but it feels like a conspiracy was brewing when they just decided to drown a whole town. That's my thoughts. Let me know in the comments and make sure to check out casetify.com slash biz to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.